This is the Three Gorges Dam, widely recognized as the most formidable dam globally due to its immense power. Just imagine its colossal scale, then picture something twice as large. Astonishingly, it's not China, America, Japan, or Australia that's planning such a massive undertaking. Leading this groundbreaking initiative, aimed at constructing a mega dam capable of energizing nearly half a continent, is none other than the Democratic Republic of the Congo. If this project comes to fruition, Africa will be home to the newest, most powerful mega dam in the world, shattering all current records. In today's video, we'll delve into Africa's upcoming $80 billion mega dam and explore all the intriguing details about it. Remember to click on that subscribe button and like this video, as it's the best way to support our channel. Geographically, the Democratic Republic of Congo, or DRC, ranks as the second largest country in Africa. With a population of 95 million people, it boasts an impressive variety of wildlife, including elephants and chimpanzees. Congo is bordered to the north by the Central African Republic and South Sudan, to the east by Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, and Tanzania, to the southeast by Zambia, and to the southwest by Angola. Its western boundaries include a brief Atlantic coastline, the Angolan exclave of Cabinda and Congo, Brazzaville. The Democratic Republic of the Congo is sometimes mistaken for its neighbor, the Republic of the Congo. Nevertheless, both nations share similarities. French is the official language in both, and Christianity is the predominant religion. The Republic of the Congo, Brazzaville, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Kinshasa, both occupy the basin of the Congo River, from which they derive their names. Their capital cities, Brazzaville and Kinshasa, are situated across from each other on opposite banks of the Congo River, making them the second closest pair of capital cities in the world after Rome and Vatican City. As former French and Belgian colonies respectively, both Congos are part of La Francophonie, an international organization of French-speaking nations. Both nations, the Republic of the Congo and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, owe their names to the Congo River, which serves as a natural divider between them. Spanning this river reveals two distinct cities, Brazzaville in the Republic of the Congo and Kinshasa in the DRC. These neighboring capitals hold the distinction of being the closest pair globally. Despite plans for a $400 million bridge to connect them, this ambitious project has yet to commence. While the Congo River is one of the largest in the world, it often doesn't receive the attention it deserves. When discussions arise about massive rivers, the Nile, Yangtze, or Amazon typically steal the spotlight due to their greater lengths. However, the Congo's significance lies in its depth, making it the deepest river globally, plunging to depths of 200 meters below the surface at its lowest point, surpassing other prominent rivers in this aspect. Moreover, the Congo River demands attention for its substantial discharge, which represents the volume of water flowing through it every second. Notably, the Congo's discharge exceeds that of the neighboring Nile by tenfold and surpasses China's Yangtze by one and a half times, though it still falls short compared to the Amazon, which reigns supreme in this regard. Yet, the most remarkable feature of the Congo River remains unexplored, Inga Falls. Located downstream from Brazzaville and Kinshasa, Inga Falls span a 15-kilometer stretch with a nearly 100-meter water cascade, creating a vast zone of formidable, swiftly moving water. While technically the world's largest waterfall, its classification is contentious due to arguments about its steepness compared to traditional waterfalls. Regardless of its classification, Inga Falls represent the most extensive and powerful stretch of white water globally, with the force of the fast-moving water holding considerable potential energy for hydroelectric dams. Inga Falls, located on the Lower Congo River, is the site of one of the largest hydroelectric dam projects globally, 
situated in the western part of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, approximately 25 miles, 40 kilometers, upstream from the port of Matadi. Positioned at a sharp bend in the river between Sekila Island and the mouth of the Bundi River, a tributary of the Congo River, the falls drop 315 feet, 96 m, over a span of 9 miles, 14 kilometers, and boast a flow rate of about 1,500,000 cubic feet, 43,000 cubic m, per second. The Inga Dams, known in French as Barrage Dinga, consist of two hydroelectric dams situated near one of the largest waterfalls globally, Inga Falls. These dams are located in the western region of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, approximately 140 miles southwest of Kinshasa. Inga Falls, located on the Congo River, is a series of rapids downstream from the Livingstone Falls and the Pool Malebo. Within this cascade, the Congo River drops approximately 96 meters, 315 feet. The average annual flow rate of the Congo River at Inga Falls is around 42,000 cubic meters per second, 1,500,000 CUFTIS. With this flow rate and the significant drop, Inga Falls alone has the potential to generate approximately 39.6 gigawatts, 53,100,000 GP of mechanical energy and nearly as much electrical energy. Currently, Inga Falls hosts two major hydropower plants and is under consideration for a much larger hydropower generating station known as Grand Inga. If completed, the Grand Inga project would be the largest hydroelectric power generating facility globally. The project's current plan involves utilizing a flow rate of approximately 26,400 cubic meters per second at a net head of around 150 meters, resulting in a generating capacity of approximately 38.9 gigawatts. This capacity would more than double that of the current world record holder, the Three Gorges facility on the Yangtze River in China. Grand Inga is envisioned as a run-of-the-river hydroelectric project, meaning that only a relatively small reservoir would be created to regulate the river's flow. This design is intended to ensure that the net head for the hydroelectric turbines can reach approximately 150 meters. The first phase of the hydroelectric project was completed in 1972, primarily to power a uranium enrichment facility at the site. The second phase, finished in 1979, involved the construction of a high-tension transmission line to Katanga province in southeastern Congo aiming to provide electricity for industries in the region. The third phase was planned to involve blocking the river's flow to create a large reservoir. Further development of the area's hydropower potential, as outlined in the ambitious Grand Inga scheme, is envisioned to establish one of the world's largest hydroelectric power systems. Experts project that the Inga Falls could potentially generate nearly 40 gigawatts of energy. To contextualize this, it's almost 50 times the current energy consumption of the entire population of the DRC and ample to provide power to multiple other African nations. Discussion about Inga's potential has persisted for over a century, originating from a survey conducted in the early 1900s that identified the Congo as possessing more than one-fourth of the world's potential water power. In the 1950s, Belgium outlined plans to dam the Inga, but had to abandon them when the DRC gained independence. Despite this setback, the idea of utilizing the Inga Falls for energy production endured. Moving forward a few years, the newly formed government of the DRC initiated the construction of a six-turbine dam known as Inga I. Subsequently, an eight-turbine dam, Inga II, was constructed. Together, these dams had a combined capacity of nearly two gigawatts, providing crucial power to key industries such as copper mines in the 1970s. However, 
Inga 1 and 2 only scratch the surface of the immense potential of the Inga Falls. Located on a side stream rather than the robust main body of water, they harnessed less than 5% of Inga's overall capability. That was half a century ago, and today the capacity of the Inga dams has further declined. Inga 1 and 2 have deteriorated over time, and the DRC faces significant challenges in maintaining them due to exorbitant costs. Currently, Inga 1 and 2 show no immediate signs of failure, but their operational capacity has dwindled to just 30% of their original generation potential. In recent years, various plans have been proposed to rejuvenate these dams, with commitments from certain international companies. Furthermore, there's a proposal to construct a third dam, known as Inga 3, with the potential to generate an additional 4.5 gigawatts of power. However, these endeavors are overshadowed by the revolutionary plan the government has envisioned for the Congo River, the Grand Inga Dam. The Inga Falls harbor the capacity to produce 40 gigawatts of energy, exceeding the current combined capacity of Inga 1 and 2 by over 20 times. The Grand Inga Dam represents an ambitious strategy to harness every ounce of this vast potential. The envisioned plan unfolds as follows. Initially, an immense barrier will be erected at the southern end of the Bundy Valley, running parallel to the Inga Falls. This 200-meter-long barrier will act as a plug at the base of a bathtub, featuring six distinct power stations. Each of these stations will accommodate hydroelectric turbines capable of generating between 4 and 8 gigawatts of power. Subsequently, another barrier will be constructed at the top of the Inga Falls, diverting the flow of rapids into the Bundy Valley, effectively filling it like a colossal tub. As the water reaches the southern edge of the valley, gravity will propel it through the turbines of the six power plants, collectively producing an astonishing 40 gigawatts of power. While redirecting rivers into artificial reservoirs for power generation has been attempted previously, the Grand Inga stands out due to its unprecedented scale. Exceeding the Three Gorges Dam, currently holding the title of the most powerful dam globally, the Grand Inga would generate more than twice the amount of power. The transformative impact of the Grand Inga Dam on the African continent could be profound, particularly in addressing the issue of nearly 50% of the population lacking access to electricity. However, the staggering construction costs linked to such a monumental dam are estimated to be approximately $80 billion, far surpassing the DRC's annual GDP by a considerable margin. This raises a crucial question. Can the DRC financially undertake this colossal project independently? The answer is likely negative, given the country's struggles in maintaining the existing Inga dams let alone embarking on the construction of a project as extensive as the Grand Inga. However, the feasibility of the project becomes more plausible when considering the potential for foreign investment. As previously mentioned, the Grand Inga could serve as a significant source of electrical energy for various regions in Africa. Several countries, including South Africa and Nigeria, have officially expressed interest in providing funds in exchange for a share of the power generated by the Grand Inga, making the realization of the project more achievable with international support. There's a proposal that individual foreign investors could finance each of the six power plants of the dam in exchange for ownership of the respective facility. Notably, esteemed financial institutions such as the World Bank, the European Investment Bank and the African Development Bank have shown willingness to contribute funds to the project. Moreover, the backing of the African Union, which aims to promote collaboration among African nations, has been secured by the DRC. Despite these collaborative efforts, uncertainties remain. Even if these partnerships manage to secure the required $80 billion, there's still the looming uncertainty that it may not suffice to complete the dam, 
Historically, many dams have exceeded their initial cost projections, with some even doubling in expenses. This potential scenario suggests that the Grand Inga Dam might end up costing closer to $160 billion, underscoring the financial complexities and uncertainties associated with such massive infrastructure projects. The Democratic Republic of the Congo, DRC, has grappled with the challenge of reviving its two existing dams, which have deteriorated and now operate well below their original capacity at approximately 40% or just over 700 MWW combined. In May 2001, Siemens reportedly entered negotiations with the government for a billion-dollar partnership aimed at revitalizing and modernizing the DRC's electrical grid, including the rehabilitation of the two existing Inga power plants. However, progress was hindered by delays. Apart from financial challenges, there are significant additional concerns to address, such as the resettlement of over 30,000 local villagers living in the Bundy Valley. Furthermore, the construction of the dam is anticipated to have profound environmental consequences, endangering critical local species, including vulnerable populations of bonobos. This raises a complex ethical dilemma. Even if the DRC manages to secure funding for the dam, is it ethically justifiable to proceed with its construction? Ethical considerations involve weighing the displacement of local communities and environmental harm against the potential to provide a sustainable and environmentally friendly energy source to millions of people in Africa. Balancing these conflicting priorities necessitates careful consideration and examination of the broader societal and ecological impacts. What are your opinions on the construction of the Grand Inga Dam? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.